This is Duke University. The vision for EDGE is really um, uh, based on the idea of three of the major um, kind of mega trends that are driving um, our society and our e economy. The first of those is a world of seven billion on the way to nine or ten billion people who all want a middle class quality of life. Um, that's a great good news story in a lot of ways. It's um, many hundreds of millions of people coming out of poverty. Um, living um, better lives and having access to education and health care and a lot of the things that improve their quality of life. In order to meet those needs, we need to have a, a, an infrastructure system and an energy system to be able to power that kind of development. And so there's a massive development going on all over the world to build out the um, the systems required to support that kind of quality of life. Um, you know, energy systems, water systems, transportation systems, urban uh, environments. That's uh, critical to be able to achieve sustainable development for, um, for those people. And all that happens in the context of a, an ecosystem, an environment that has its own requirements and its own constraints that have to be uh, accounted for as you think about how to mi migrate um, uh, into the future. We think business plays a really unique role um, at the intersection of those me mega trends, um, both because business is profoundly affected by um, you know, the, the challenges in each of those spheres, but maybe more importantly, business plays an incredible catalytic role in actually meeting those needs, building out those infrastructures, and doing so in a way that um, is compatible with the ecosystems that they're embedded in. I think the business case for sustainability um, you know, is different for every company, first of all. Um, so I believe every company has a sustainability signature, so there isn't a one-size-fits-all. But I see it as kind of a, 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 a set of layers. Um, the first, uh, uh, which has been there um, traditionally, is there's a whole set of things uh, around compliance and efficiency, which are just clearly good business. You save money, you um, a, a, avoid regulatory infractions that cost you money, you operate more efficiently, and there's a clear correlation that companies that manage those kind of issues tend to manage lots of other issues well as well. And, uh, and there's a case to be made that those companies are, are valued more highly. I think beyond that, as companies get um, into sustainability, they realize that there are um, really strategic opportunities around sustainability as a way of driving innovation in their products, as a way of understanding their supply chain better and finding um, both more efficient and effective ways to manage their broader business system, as well as understanding where there are kind of red flags embedded in their broader business system that they need to address now before those become liabilities to the company. And then finally, I think companies that really take this on, are beginning to see a shift of companies away from uh, a traditional focus on footprint. In other words, all of the impacts that they have and how do they manage or minimize those impacts to realizing that business is uh, an incredible vehicle for delivering solutions for exactly these kinds of problems. So as bu businesses rethink um, sustainability um, as a way of driving more business for themselves, um, new product lines, new solutions which can effectively address these sustainability challenges, I think then they see this less as a kind of um, responsibility or um, an obligation or a moral act, and they see this as a fundamental driver um, for their strategy uh, of creating value in the marketplace. The trends that I see that are kind of front and center for um, many companies that I talk to, um, I think issues of water. Now this is an issue that I personally have cared about and focused on for a long time, but I do believe that there's a kind of new urgency around addressing water issues. We have 
you know, um, examples in California, in Texas, uh, you know, even in historically tropical places uh, like Brazil, that real constraints around water are creating um, ch uh, huge challenges for business and for society as a whole. Um, so I do think that that's an area that a lot of companies have approached in a, a narrow kind of compliance oriented way but really have to rethink how they engage around a systemic challenge, both on the water quantity side as well as the water quality side. So I think that's a really critical issue. Um, second, I think um, there's a lot of discussion around issues of, of waste and its alternatives. So kind of a rethinking about one way production systems that start with raw materials and end up as waste. Um, and uh, imagining different ways to utilize materials and create um, circles of use um, so that there can be uh, much more value extracted from the same kind of resource inputs to the system, um, uh, uh, maximizing both the economic opportunity but also minimizing the environmental impact. And I think, you know, some of the work that companies like Dow and DuPont are doing around really rethinking um, the extent to which they are um, dependent on fossil fuels versus other kinds of um, bio inputs and then closing the loops of those materials so that they can cycle multiple times. I think there's a lot of interesting work that's happening there. Um, a third area that I find really interesting is getting beyond incremental efficiency to really think about where are there kind of disruptive opportunities for resource productivity. Um, so there's um, many examples uh, if you look at the, you know, some of what's happening in the sharing economy um, uh, around uh, transportation, you know, it's an, uh, the system we have now of individual cars, usually with one person in them, driven about 4% of the total life, the rest of the time sitting in garages, creating an enormous highway system to support all of these independent cars, building suburbs that put people a long ways away from their um, their work. I think there's enormous opportunities to rethink those systems in fundamental ways uh, and create um, much greater productivity out of the resource um, use that we have. There's so much upside potential to, to capture gains out of um, the system we have. We don't operate in an optimal system, so we have the chance to make the world better, not just save it from collapse, which is the way I think a lot of people think about this, but it's not optimal for lots of people in the world in lots of ways. So we have a, a chance to actually make the world better, and I think that's compelling. Uh, I think um, it would be short-sighted to undersell how ingenious people are at coming up with solutions, particularly when um, they realize the urgency of the challenge. And if you look historically, there have been a lot of phases where people were predicting the kind of imminent collapse of their uh, economy or society, which often didn't come to pass. And the reason for that is because of incredible innovation, technology, innovation, um, business uh, model uh, innovation, and business has played a critical role in transforming to be able to adapt to that. So we have gone a long ways down a path of kind of living on the edge. And I guess the question is, do we have faith that humanity collectively will have the intelligence to move at the speed and the scale of the challenge to be able to um, continue to kind of stay ahead of the curve?